<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Passover for One, a solitary Seder for social distancers. Like you and me, we cannot leave our houses right now, so we cannot see our family and we cannot have a Seder. So I am throwing a Seder for you and for me on the computer using technology. This is not a serious Seder. If you are a very orthodox individual, you will probably think that what I am doing is blasphemous, but it's going to be fun, and I'm going to be telling the story of Passover for all to enjoy, and I have all of my goods in front of me. I hope that you'll sit with me now for 2020's Passover for One. So let us begin with our Seder plate. My Seder plate is a bunch of Tupperware containers because I live in an apartment and that is the way that we do things here. On your Seder plate, you must have, of course, the lamb, the horoset, the horseradish, the bitter herb, the good herb, the good green stuff, and egg, very good egg. On the side of your plate, you will also need some delicious salt water. Uh, I have some in a, in a Harvard University mug here. So uh, you, can, you can know that these are the tears of a college student who's taking all their classes online despite paying full price for their tuition. You also have matzah. This is my matzah. It's like bread, but bad. Uh, I got some, some sugar skulls on there. And on my sheet of matzah, I have three. I have one, two, three. And one is in a plastic bag because uh, it's gonna be used for something later. And also you need very important adult juice. So this is my wine. Do not use Manischewitz, please. Uh, this is not kosher for Passover wine, but it's actually wine. Uh, this is... I, this is a three buck chuck from Trader Joe's, which is traditional in my family. So uh, we've, got, we've got this good Charles Shaw. I will be having four glasses for myself. And it will also be a glass for Elijah. So we've got, we've got Elijah's cup here. This is the, uh, the more spill-proof mug. And, oh, I'm going out of focus, and there's wine on my shirt. Oh, it's like Passover already. It's like Passover already. Uh, so Manischewitz, uh, the stuff in the middle, is what many families have for their Passover wine. And it's not actually wine. If you, if you look at the bottle, it just says, like, Conquered Grape. Because I'm pretty sure it's vodka mixed with grape juice, and it's bad. It's bad. Yes, I'm doing some Passover. And Elijah, we will get to later, but uh, Elijah is the party ghost who loves to go house to house and get crazy crunk. Absolutely accurate. Other things to do before we get ready for our Seder, we need to light the candles. I live in an apartment that's not, you're not supposed to light candles in it because it's against the lease. So we will not be lighting the candles, but we can pretend we did. And then we can say, Baruch Atah Adonai, thank you God for this. Dank, dank, light. We pour the wine. We got, we got to pour in our first glass of wine here. And say, yo, God, thank you for this wine. It's hella fine. I'm going to drink the wine. Got to drink the wine. Yeah, we got that bravery for Got to have the wine, though. It's very important. Mm-hmm. So we've had the first glass of wine. And now it is very important that you wash your hands and then wash your hands again. And if you would like to combine all three of these things together, light the candles, pour the wine, drink the wine, wash your hands, just take a bath, a nice romantic bath right here. So I'm gonna go wash my hands and then get comfy, grab a pillow way back. Cause you're supposed to recline.
<laughs> I have stolen a pillow from the sofa. This is my pillow now. It's good. It helps me recline. Oh, yes! Getting so ready! For our Seder Begins. What do we- what do we got here? We got... My parsley. It, it's getting picked up by the green screen, yes. Yes it is. Um, that's because it's green. This is a green screen. Thanks, God. This green stuff? It's pretty good. Dip it into... Some salt water. These are my, my college student tears. By the way, yes, you can use any form of salt water. But please do not use Gamer Girl bath water for this. It's a bad idea. Like, I'm just- I'm just telling you now, please don't do it. Please don't do it. I eat that. And these are- these are the tears. That is what the green stuff dipped- dipped in the salt water represents. Mmm. It's good. I like parsley a lot. You don't just need a little parsley. You know what? Technically, there's actually an amount of parsley you're supposed to limit yourself to. There's like a number of grams that some rabbi out there was like, don't eat more than this amount of parsley. However, I don't care. It's good. I love eating raw parsley. In fact, I've eaten so much raw parsley that I've gotten kidney stones. And now I'm gonna teach you all an unrelated lesson. If you eat a bunch of parsley every week for a year, you'll probably get kidney stones. So please don't do that. I did that. I didn't know that's what would happen, but it's what happened to me. So don't give yourself kidney stones. That's some friendly advice from me to you. And now we break the middle matzah. And, uh, normally you put the middle matzah that you broke and did not put in, in your little fancy baggie in a special holder. I don't have one of those. In fact, the, the matzah I had came with a baggie for just this. And this middle matzah is going to become the afikomen, which I am going to hide by throwing over the green screen. It is now hidden. I will find it eventually. I will find it eventually. I'll cover the cover the rest of the matzah up. You know, we don't we don't want to look at this. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. How do you avoid kidney stones? Um, drink a lot of water, exercise, and don't eat too much high oxalate foods. Now we move to the four questions. Why is this night different from all other nights? That's not one of the four questions, but it should be. Why can we only eat matzah and only bread? Why can we only eat bitter herbs when normally we eat not bitter herbs? Why do we dip foods twice? And why do we recline while eating? The answer to all of these is vague interpretations from the story of Passover, which is the first half of Exodus, which is what we're going to be saying. It's five. It's five. Five questions and the four questions is five. five. And the four children also ask some questions. And the four children are the wise child who asks, What are the rules for Passover? And the wicked child who asks, What does Passover mean to you? And the simple child who asks, What's a Seder? And then there is the child who does, uh, who does not know enough to ask. And you gotta tell the whole story of this kid, that's why we tell the story on Passover. By the way, there's a lot of, uh, like, debate, internal debate I had. Is Francis the wicked child? Or is he the child who does not know enough to ask? Is Reese the wicked child? The simple child? Which of these- which of the Malcolms in the middle is which? Which of the- which of these is which? There's a lot of internal debate that happened for me. 
And now we begin! Exodus! This is one of the books of Torah or the Bible, whatever you want to call it. And our story begins. In ancient Egypt, where there was a lot of sand and a river, the, the Nile River. And back in the good old days, Jacob and his family had escaped famine and settled in Egypt. And the Jacob's son and the Pharaoh were total homies. And Jacob's family grew and prospered and they were the Israelites. But oh wait, oh no, the cool Pharaoh died. Oh. Oh, the cool Pharaoh died. I don't, I, there might have actually been like two Pharaohs in the middle, because this is a couple generations later. And the new Pharaoh, he, he wasn't cool. He was like, oh man, what are, what are all these, uh, they're having so many kids, there's gonna be more than them than us, and then they're gonna take over, and they're gonna take, they're gonna take me, the Pharaoh, down, they're getting too powerful. So I'm going to enslave them and also maybe drown their firstborn sons. So the order went out to drown the firstborn sons. Oh, any boys. Any baby boys, I think it was, actually. Not not firstborn sons. Just just boy, baby boys. Baby boys. Just just do it. These gotta drown the boys. Drown those babies. And the Israelites didn't like that. Cause um y you know. It usually it's like you don't usually like like when you're being genocided. You usually don't. You say... I'm out. I'm out. So they tried to leave. The Israels, the Israelites, they, they sent Moses, which is the great-great-grandson of Jacob, the dude who was homies with the Pharaoh before, to ask the Pharaoh if they could leave. And the first said no. So Moses tried asking the Pharaoh again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And the Pharaoh said no. Even more. He said he said no even harder. And after nine attempts to free the Israelites free the Israelites from the Pharaoh's enslavement, God had intervened. He had intervened for each time that the Israelites asked to be freed. And he sent nine plagues, one for each time, and a final plague to ensure the Israelites would be granted their freedom. These are really cute plagues. Really, really, really cute plagues! I need more wine on me to get my story straight? No, we're fine. We're, we're doing fine. Now we get to the plagues. Plagues. For each plague, we remove a drop of wine from our glass and we dab it onto a plate or napkin. And that is to signify the loss of joy, because a full cup of wine is full of joy. And we lose our wine, we lose our joy, we, we show the cost of the freedom. You play along at home, by the way. You can spill wine on yourself nine times and say, yeah, that counts. This seems good. And don't lick your finger, because that means you're taking joy from it. Yeah, don't. Don't... Don't do that. Ready for some dipping? The oh, first plague! It was blood! All the river, and the Nile, and the waters connecting it, turned red with blood. It may have actually been an algae, but it turned red with blood. So we dip our fingers in. You can also use like an eyedropper to be more sanitary, and I'm gonna dip that over there on my on my little napkin. And frogs hopping everywhere, driving everybody mad with their ribbiting. And, and also like just I don't know, being frogs, they're gross. You have you ever stepped on a frog? It's not good. Lice. Making everybody itchy and... Diseased. That's lice. 
quite it's all the lice. So much lice. You know, ancient Egypt had a huge lice problem. That's why they would shave their heads and wear their fancy little headdresses and wigs, according to uh, the Sawbones podcast. I believe they told me that. We're also wild beasts rampaging. It's just like Madagascar. And if that wasn't enough, all the livestock got sick. There was pestilence of livestock, which means like their animals died. Their goats died, their cows died, they got sick, they got grody, they got mange, it was nasty. It was na- it was real gross. And then boils! Blisters! Pus! Grossness! It's like their skin got bad. Maybe it was just bad acne, they had too much pizza. So much pizza that their skin broke out, but it was boils! It's from the lice, maybe. And then hail, which I apparently forgot in the original slideshow, but somebody pointed out that I forgot one of the plagues. Thank you. The hail rained from the sky, denting their Egyptian ancient cars and breaking their windows that weren't glass at that time. And, uh, being very painful and cold and annoying. And if you watch the Ten Commandments, apparently the hail is made of fire, but there's no nothing to support that. And then there were locusts! This is, uh, there were, there were locusts. Look at this! Look at this really cute locusts! Look at that! Isn't that cute? Look at a little cricket. A lot, a lot of appropriate magic cards to help describe this, like, like, uh, the locust god and locust swarms. And all that. Yeah, this dude who's standing in the middle of a locust swarm, that's badass. Those things hurt. They will slam into you with quite a bit of force. I don't think I did a dippy yet for this. Dippy! And then there was darkness. The sun blotted out. This is an eclipse, probably. It's dark. You know, it's hard to do things when it's dark. I would be scared too if things were suddenly dark. But sometimes it's just dark outside. And the Egyptians have to realize that this is a bad thing. And the final plague was the death of the firstborn son. God had instructed all of the Israelites to paint their doors with lamb's blood. That is the sacrifice. We, we have the lamb shank on our, on our plate for this as well. You, you, you paint your door with lamb's blood. So the angel of death would pass you by, and anybody who did not would have their firstborn son die. And by the way, the firstborn son, that's like the heir of your family. That's like the most important boy. And girls didn't mean a lot about that, so it was like most important boy. So it was mostly the Israelites and like their homies. They were like, hey, Marcus. So like my god told me that there was going to be um, everybody's son dying tonight. You should put some lamb's butt on your door. Like I'm just telling you now because like, you know, we're cool. Yeah, come on. We share the same wheat field. Come on, we're cool. Israelites and friends. I Israelites and their friends. And the Pharaoh, after the tenth plague, said yes when Moses. Oh, I forgot to do my dippy there, by the way, dippy. 
Moses asked the Pharaoh if the Israelites could leave. And the Pharaoh said yes. He, said, he finally said yes. Ten times. It took ten times. Shows that persistence is key. He allowed them to leave. And the Israelites, knowing that the Pharaoh could change his mind at any minute, they fled towards the Red Sea. They said, let's get, we're out. We are out. And they left as fast as they could. They didn't have time to bake their bread. That's what the matzah is. So matzah is unleavened bread, which is just um, bread that the yeast wasn't allowed to rise. But it's also, like, we just actually make it now as just bread without yeast in it. Um, because yeast back then wouldn't be like a pack of yeast, it would just be, you know, natural yeast that grew in stuff and yeast cultures. It's like cardboard. It really is. Look at it spin. It's like a big ol' unsalted cracker. A big ol' unsalted cracker. So they were pretty much baking the bread on their backs while they went. That's why they are. That's why we eat matzah. But when the Israelites were fleeing, the bot- the- Pharaoh said, wait, no, wait, no, wait, 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 come back! I really liked having you all enslaved. It was good. For me, especially. It was good for me. And he sends an army after the Israelites. And the Pharaoh's army chased after the Israelites, but they had a head start. And they may have been slow moving, but they were packing lights, so they were still making pretty good progress, and they had made it to the Red Sea. And the Pharaoh's army almost got to them. But then Moses called to God to help and said, Hey, wait, crap, we can't cross an ocean, we don't got no boats. And God assisted in parting the Red Sea. So the Israelites could pass through safely. I, by the way, if you want, like, a good Passover story, the Rugrats Passover is very excellent. Very excellent. When the Pharaoh's army tried to cross the, the Red Sea, though, behind the Israelites, the water closed behind them, drowning them, trapping them, and stopping them from chasing the Israelites. The, the, the Passover comes from, like, the passing over with the, uh, the angel of death. Not this. And this is just a one you all know. If you look up sad, wet military, this is the image that comes up. Sad, wet military. The Israelites were now free, but they were stuck in the desert. If you want to know more, you can read Exodus. There's the, the whole second half is about that. And now it's almost time to eat! I forgot my egg in the other room. I will get my egg. Egg! Egg! Egg. 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 Hard boiled, of course. Stinking of sulfur and tasty cholesterol. So no, we got. We got to talk about what's on the seder plate. It's a little more. Egg. Why egg? It was a traditional sacrifice. Apparently, egg was actually uh, added pretty recently. Lamb. That's traditional, though. We, we would honor this exodus with the lamb. Also, the lamb's blood is part of the story. Why matzah? No time for bread. We talked about that. They had to cook their bread real fast. Why bitter herb? Oh, wait, here's my bitter herb. It's uh, Trader Joe's horseradish. It's good. I highly recommend it. I put it on my pretzels, which are not kosher for Passover. Gotta put that spoon in there. It's because life was bitter. It was sad! They were slaves! Pretty much every holiday that the Jews celebrate is the celebration of, hey, we were in a really bad situation, and now we're in a slightly less bad situation. So we're still celebrating sadness. And why Haroset? Haroset, I did not show yet, is this tasty apple stuff. 
So this is supposed to be like the brick and mortar. Um, it is oftentimes made with either apple, pears, raisins, dried fruit, nuts. A lot of people use walnuts. I use pecans because it's what I had. They're pretty much the same. It's really good. Some wine. Pumpkin pie seasoning. Really tasty. I know I'm not supposed to eat yet, but like, it's right here. Right here. It's got nuts. So, you know, them old school Jews were building the, uh, building stuff for the Egyptians when they were slaves. So that's, that's that brick and mortar right there. So good. And now we gotta get ready. So I have my wine glass number two here, and we say, Thank you for the grape. Doing good. Make good grape. Fruit of vine. Oh, it's good. It's good three dollar wine. Hug Samayak, yes. And you should also wash your hands again. You know, you can never be too safe. In the times of COVID-19. You gotta, gotta have a little more. And gotta have a little bit more. I don't know, a little bit more. Really gotta have that wine. Oh. It's good. Oh, food! Now it's time for food! We must bless the matzah. Thank you, God, for the bread and the wheat that made the bread. It's real good, except it's a lot better when it's not matzah. You did the whole wheat thing. It's good. And bitter herb. Thanks for the veggies. I mean, this is like one of the ones that not a lot of people like, but I mean, I eat a lot of. Well, I eat a lot of this. This is horseradish. It's good. It's really good. And now we make a sandwich. So let me grab some of that matzo. And what am I reclining? I've got a. I'm reclining. So we get our matzo. Get our huge amount of, of uh, horseradish because it's a challenge. It's not supposed to be a challenge, but it is a challenge. And then I'm gonna dip it. In the Horoset, and I'm gonna dip it twice because that's what you're supposed to do. It really doesn't do anything to dip it. It doesn't dip it. The borrow story? Well, there's a bad translation of Exodus? I believe it! I don't even know what that is. And now we eat some of this food! Ah. Mmm. good shit. Mmm. Wash it down, you right. I like this. And now it's time to party hard with a ghost. Elijah, the prophet, is coming! So we got to pour a glass for Elijah. All right, my homeboy Elijah. Really, I should have poured this earlier, but you know. Elijah, by the way, gets a hearty serving of wine because he deserves it. So I will leave this out here and I'll open the door. Who would ask Elijah? He's a prophet. I've opened the door. I've opened the door to the room that I'm in. He's the party ghost. You should high five him. What's up, Elijah? You like this wine? 
pleasure. You like the wine? Good. It was. It was three dollars. It was three dollars. I dropped the cork. It was three dollars. I have made bad with the cork. So we have allowed the party ghost to enter our home, and Elijah will be visiting all the Hebrews and Shebrews tonight, so he can get those good, good brewskis. And by which I mean wine. Gotta have the wine. And now, because this is the social distancing Seder, instead of now having dessert, getting that off Coleman, which is, uh, oh, by the way, I found it. Haha, <laughs> I threw it on the other side of the green screen. Look, I I found the Ava Coleman. This is dessert. Mmm, dessert. Mmm, great. Bad. It's bad. <laughs> Normally now this is when you like you're drunk, sure hanging out with Elijah. Well, like, oh my god, I got five bits for the Afikoman. Thank you for finding the Afikoman. But like, I'm alone. Yeah, I mean my boyfriend's in the other room. But like, I'm alone. What am I supposed to do? The the answer to what you're supposed to do is fall asleep on the sofa. For me, that just means hug Sameach. Happy Passover, homies. It was great. That's the story of Passover. <laughs>